In his book, The Christ, a critical review and analysis of the evidences of his existence, the 19th century author John Remsburg offers some examples of contradictions in the birth story of Jesus. In one of the examples, he asks, was Jesus born in a house or in a stable? And then identifies two texts which seem to contradict one another. The verse is Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother. But then you have Luke chapter 2 and verse 7. And she brought forth her first son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Speaking about the alleged contradiction between these two verses, Remsburg then says, Nothing can be clearer than the author of Matthew supposes that Jesus was born in a house. The author of Luke, on the other hand, expressly declares that he was born in a stable. Luke's story concerning the place of Mary's accouchement has been received, while that of Matthew has been ignored. Well, let's take a look at what the text actually says. But first, we have to recognize that Remsburg is using a very familiar tactic. He's taking two verses out of context and setting them against each other. I think a lot of critics do this in the attempt to make it obvious that the two passages are in conflict. However, the problem is you can only do this by removing them from their contexts, and that means you're losing a lot of information that you need to be able to interpret each passage properly. So let's do that now. In Matthew chapter 2, we see that the wise men have arrived. They've come to visit the king of the Jews. But when did this happen? If we look at European art depicting this scene, we see wise men in attendance there at the birth. It looks like they got there only a short while after Mary is delivered. In fact, it gives us the impression that they were there that very night. And Mary looks fabulous for a lady who just delivered a baby. But it seems that what's really going on here is that the wise men have arrived some time after Jesus' birth. We can determine this from a clue that Matthew gives us. When Herod realizes that the wise men have tricked him, he, they're not going to reveal the location of the child to him, he then sends his men to kill all of the male children two years old and younger in the area. So it seems very clear that there is an indeterminate amount of time between Jesus' birth and the wise men's arrival. Otherwise, Herod would have just had all of his men kill the newborns belonging to recently expectant mothers. But that doesn't necessarily answer the question. In Luke chapter 2, we can see clearly that Mary has just given birth. She's wrapped Jesus in swaddling clothes, and she lays him in a manger. A manger was a food trough for animals, and we assume that because we understand that animals eat outside or in a barn, that the manger in which Jesus was laid must have been in a stable. But what people often don't realize is that many homes in first century Palestine often had room inside the house for animals and their feeding troughs were located inside the house as well. So the animals would be brought in at night when it gets cold, and they would be sent out during the day. Now, to understand the Bible properly, it is important to make sure that we don't read our modern Western experience into the Bible, because the two are often very different, and that is the case here. A 19th century missionary named William Thompson wrote that peasants in Palestine still had mangers or feeding troughs in their homes in his day. Speaking of the birth of Jesus, he said, It is my impression that the birth actually took place in an ordinary house of some common peasant, and that the baby was laid in one of the mangers, such as are still found in the dwellings of farmers in this region. Now that was in the mid-1800s, but another early 20th century writer made exactly the same observation. In the East today, the dwelling place of man and beast is often in one and the same room. It is quite the usual thing among the peasants for the family to live, eat, and sleep on a kind of raised terrace in the one room of the house, while the cattle, particularly the donkeys and oxen, have their place below on the actual floor near the door. On this floor, the mangers are fixed either to the floor or to the wall or at the edge of the terrace. Now, that was just in the 1930s. So this is not a new argument. This can be traced back several hundreds of years. And scholars have been able to reconstruct what a typical ancient floor plan would have looked like. Animals would be kept inside in a lower area or on the first floor while the family stayed in another part of the house. It was typically only the very wealthy who had a separate area for animals. So this romantic idea that the Holy Family was turned away from the inn and Mary had to give birth in some kind of barn is totally false. 
The majority of scholars interpret the text of Luke to mean that Joseph and Mary found that the spare room of the house where they were going to stay was already occupied. And if we look at the text of Luke chapter 2 and verse 7, we can see that most translations will render the word as in, but it almost certainly means something more like a spare room or a guest room, because there is a word for in in Greek, and that is not the word that Luke uses here. It seems fairly clear that Joseph and Mary traveled back to Bethlehem to stay in a private home, probably with his family, not spend the night at a Holiday Inn Express. Now, after Mary had given birth, she lays Jesus in a manger, and that would have been located inside the house. Well, these kinds of details are important, and we need to know them so that we know how to interpret the text properly. Because there are a lot of folks who don't know much about the Bible who see errors and contradictions around every corner. So arguing that Matthew and Luke contradict one another on the birthplace of Jesus is a problem that has been manufactured through the careless use or misuse of Scripture.